Welcome back to another video here on Free Will Photos. Today, I ran into an embarrassing problem when I created this video. My microphone was muted, so all of my thoughts, they just weren't shared in the video. Since I really wanted to share this with you, I'm just gonna do a voiceover and outline the things that I was doing so that way I can get this post up. I do need your help though. If you like this style of content with the voiceover, please let me know in the comment section below and I can probably do more content like this. So when I started the edit, I did not do anything in the develop module. I just went straight over to the effects and I started by adding a color enhancer because I want to improve the green. So I started with a color enhancer to bring out a slight glow to the light that is touching the green leaves in the image. I modified the saturation and vibrance of the entire image to ensure I like what the effect is doing. And then I added a color range mask targeting the greens in the image. Then I refined it so it only targeted the exact color I sampled. By messing around with the levels on the mask, I was able to balance it out and get something that I really liked overall. I experimented with moving the window slider to see if I liked the way the mask came out, but eventually settled on putting it back to the default settings. And as usual, I added a small amount of feathering to make everything blend way more cohesively. I moved the hue of the yellow channel more to the greens, increased the saturation a little, and increased the brightness. On the green channel, I increased the saturation and brightness to really bring out the light and color of the trees in the overall image. Then I moved on to the tone enhancer. The goal with the tone enhancer was to really build on the overall brightness of the image. So when I opened up the tone enhancer, I started with exposing the image to see which areas I should enhance on the image and then reduced it to about one third of an increase. Next, I moved to the shadows and I gave a slight increase because increasing the light means that shadows are likely to be opened a little bit more. I don't want to open them too much because shadows allow for depth in an image and I don't want it to be washed out. I added a small amount of contrast because I seen that some of the depth was getting washed out and contrast, it just helps bring all of that back. The goal with this filter is a subtle adjustment that complements the entire image and the idea of increasing the light in a nice way. Now, just like the color enhancer, I wanted to put this adjustment into the greens of the image that are being impacted by the light. I sampled an area that was similar to the color enhancer and then made a few modifications. I realized that some of the leaves were not as sharp as I thought they should be, so I modified the detail and clarity sliders, so that way I just brought back a little bit more uh, detail into the image based off of all of the edits that I've applied so far. The end result of the tone enhancer and the masking makes the light increase look way more natural and realistic in my opinion. With the light and basic color adjustments made, I moved on to the photo filter effect to bring out the color of the light. Now with the photo filter, the light in this image has a color and I wanted to capitalize on that with the leaves as it interacts with hitting and everything like that. So I explore with a few color options in the color wheel to see what works the best for this image. This way of exploring is really fun for me because I don't always know what I want to do with an image. And using this color wheel technique, I can really just start to imagine everything else I could do with the image as I'm applying different colors and seeing uh, what they look like, sampling it out, if you will. But I will note that I could have sampled a color from the image instead of using a color wheel, but I wanted to add color to the image that wasn't there originally, which is why I used the method I did. This could be disingenuous if you are doing this on your own photos, but just know if you're doing it creatively or if you're doing it to uh, enhance what's already there, you may want to sample a color that's already on your image. Once I found the color I wanted, I added a color range mask to select the existing color of the light 
so that way I'm applying this new color directly to everything that that existing light is already impacting um, because I didn't want this going over the entire image affecting all of the grains that wouldn't have been impacted by the light if you've noticed this whole edit has just been very targeted on modifying the light and making it look how I want it to look overall so I fine-tuned the color range just a little and moved on to adding a glow effect. So with the glow filter, the effect I was going for was very simple. Make it look magical. I fiddled around with it until I found something I liked and reduced the opacity. The main thing that I think I liked with this effect was changing the blend mode to screen, which made it more bright and ethereal in nature. Uh, that's what I was kind of going for. You'll notice that I thought it was just too strong, so I lowered the opacity to blend it a little better. I love using the opacity sliders in on one to blend effects. I, it's just my favorite way of making effects kind of uh, blend with what's already there. Now it was time to move on to the final filter of this edit, which is the dynamic contrast. Truthfully, I didn't do anything with it except for reduce the opacity, so not much to talk about there. The final thing that I did with this image was remove some distractions. On one makes it really easy to remove these little distractions though with the retouching tool. So I make quick work of getting these little things out of the way. If you got questions about the retouching tool, leave it in the comment section below. But for this edit, I'm just going to assume everyone knows how to use it. Even when you watch me line up that uh, little line that it was sampling or moving the sample spot. Hopefully this shows the capabilities of using on one to get your creative ideas out of your head and into your photos and then sharing it with the world. If you're looking to pick up on one photo raw 2023.5, you can do so by using a link in the description box below. Save 20% by using the coupon code freewillphotos20 at checkout. That's a great way to support this channel and you get a cool piece of software at the exact same time. Comment below if you like this style of content and until the next time, stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.